Now, let's get into this, these shenanigans. Let's get into these shenanigans, man. This this writer strike is crazy, man. This is it's it's crazy. Well, um, not I'm sorry, not this writer strike, this actor strike. I'm tripping already. This actor strike is crazy. And it's near, it's it's near and dear to me because I am, I guess you can consider me a freelance actor. I've done some background work, you know what I'm saying? I've I've been in a couple of movies and things of that nature. So I am watching how this escalates. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because of right now, <laughs> I think all the background work is, you know, with all everything shut down, ain't no background work for me. So I can't do no background work. So I'm watching this. But then it was something. I'm, I mean, we'll just go through this. You know what I'm saying? So we know the, the actors have now joined the writers in the Hollywood strike. They on the picket lines uh, every three years. The unions try to negotiate new contracts with the uh, Alliance of Motion Picture and, and Television Producers, which represents studios like Warner Brothers, Discovery, uh, Universal Pictures, networks like Amazon, Hulu. Um, and the contracts covers, you know, a parameter of, of workers, varied jobs that they ensure pay is adequate. Uh, health and safety standards are met, so forth and so on. You know, the, the routine things that, that unions do. You know what I'm saying? The, the Screen Actors Guild of America, uh, Federation of Television and Radio Artists, a.k.a. Uh, SAF, I mean, SAG-AFTRA, which is the union that represents these performers, entered negotiations uh, surrounding the actors' film and television work on june 7th with their contract set to expire june 30th their negotiations were ongoing the organizations agreed to extend actors contracts until july 12th well july 13th came the parties couldn't agree union officially issued a strike order bow no more work because we done out here done strike don't you cross that line homie stay over here don't cross that picket line that's what's going on right now man so the bottom line is the conversations is is about the age of stream. You know what I'm saying? The business has fundamentally changed. Uh, it requires a new way of thinking, a new way of compensating these actors and and these workers who are on these projects. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's it's a lot of sticking. So it's a lot of sticking points that the actors and the studios couldn't agree on. Here here are some of the things: wage increases. So SAG wants increases that are make up for the high inflation, which we've recently had. Right. Uh, wages differ depending on the performer, but a non background actor's minimum rate for a film with a total budget greater than two million was three thousand seven hundred and fifty six per week at the end of the last contract. Right. Three thousand seven hundred and fifty six per week. And that's off a two million dollar film. Residuals in streaming. This is to me, this is real important. Residuals and streaming. There is a residual formula already, but the union wants an additional formula that would apply to shows that are successful and reward the actors in excess. And I think what they're saying is, yeah, you're paying me for these streams, but then you got some of these shows where people is, is watching, 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 watching. And since we don't have syndication with streaming, how am I to get paid for a show that's being watched millions of times over? right where are my residuals at in the streaming when it comes to that so yeah you got a formula to residually pay me but when there's a successful show think about like martin being ran i'm pretty sure martin lawrence is getting residual checks from that because it's bt playing that shit uh you know all of them channels mtv plays it i remember you know growing up watching all of those old shows uh beverly hillbillies um, um, who was that? Uh, the Andy Griffith show, you know what I'm saying? Just because those shows was in syndication. Imagine how much money was being, how much revenue was being generated because it was shown on different stations, different networks, and things of that nature. Also, uh, to get back to it, AI use, they say the actors don't want to be displaced by technology and certainly not without being compensated for. It. Come on, man. Basically, they saying. Don't take you now. You're trying to take me out of the equation with AI. I'm the actor. Now you're trying to take me out of the equation. You know what I'm saying? AI is currently being used with effects like de aging. You know what I'm saying? AI is a tool. I'm not necessarily, me myself, I'm not necessarily against AI. 
but parameters, rules, laws should be put in place when it comes to these AI and how they're being used. You know what I'm saying? So I agree with SAG AFTRA when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, AI is the ability to use the likeness of back. So, so this is this what hurt me. This is what really got me. <laughs> this is what got me. They said that the studio suggestion for AI using AI is the ability to use the likeness of background actors who've been paid for one day's work in perpetuity without pay or cons or uh, consent. You pay me for a day, you scan my face, and now you use me wherever you want to use me at? Fuck no. No. Without pay or consent? No. That ain't, and like I said, I'm low toe to pole when it comes to, I'm freelance actor, I do background work every now and then, you know what I'm saying? I might get roles on some independent films of, of that nature, but it's a lot of people who make their bones doing background work. Lots. Matter of fact, a lot of people, that's how they come up in the industry. Background work. I'm a, you know, I be a background actor. I do this for a couple of years. Hopefully I can get a role here, a role there, a speaking role. You know what I'm saying? Get my SAG points, things of that nature. Now you're trying to tell me that you only going, you're going to pay me for a day, but use my likeness forever. Fuck no. You guys, to, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Uh, virtual uh, uh, auditions. Says historically, actors will go to a physical location audition. Now you tape an audition yourself at home. Uh, this means the actors have to take on the job of camera person and editor. They have to make sure that there's someone to read opposite them and that there's adequate space in their homes to record. People will find themselves spending money to apply for jobs. Now that ain't cool. See, I ain't even look at that. Virtual auditions being bad. So that, and he, this person saying that you would have to spend money to apply for a job imagine you going up to a job and you gotta you gotta do all the things in the in the audition for the job or the interview that's that's wild man nah mm. yeah gotta read you know find somebody to read back to you or uh, uh read opposite your lines and things of that nature having the right space Having cameras, knowing how to use these things. Some people just, you know what I'm saying? They they not tech savvy, so they don't even really know how to use these things. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's something that, that should be negotiated or at least talked about and, and, and looked at. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um virtual auditions are stick important for actor Tally Madell, who's appeared in films like Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and goes by the Madell does at least one self tape per week. Uh, if they need to rent out a studio space to do so, that can cost fifteen to forty dollars an hour. Uh, there has been some sort of compensation for the amount of work we're putting in. There has to be some sort of compensation. I'm sorry, there has to be some sort of compensation for the amount of work we're putting in for these self tapes. I agree. They they at least got should reimburse you for self tape. If I have to run off to some uh influencer studio to to make this tape or you know what i'm saying i gotta go buy additional things to go in my house set up set up some type of uh studio room in my house yeah i should be i think you should be compensated for it i think you should um as with writers actors wages uh account for taxes on them team members such as managers agents get their own commission on top of the actor pay and for the unprecedentedly uh of the industry you're working from job to job says Medell. there are periods in between where you are not working acting is a risk and that's true being an actor is it's a risk being an actor you know what i'm saying you you might be working today tomorrow you never know you know what i'm saying that's that's the risk of taking on this shit um so yeah productions and since the strike productions have shut down man i'm talking about cease just er, screeching halt, man. Uh, the strike means for actors' day-to-day -day work, they're barred from doing various duties of their jobs, including acting, singing, and dancing on camera, voice acting, and narrating off the camera. They're also barred from doing any promotion or publicity surrounding their upcoming or forthcoming films. Uh, the Oppenheimer actors left the film's London premiere before a screening. They just got up and left. 
when when the call went out, when the bat signal went up saying we on strike, the homies got up. The homies got up. You know what I'm saying? I think that's dope standing in, in uh, solidarity with each other. I think that's dope. Now, for the rest of the industry, any remaining operation will cease for the time being. Uh, one estimate is that 80 percent of the production is shut down already. So the remaining 20 percent will be shut down. That's 100 percent done. So 80 percent was was shut down due to the writer strike. Now the actor strike was the other 20 percent. Panito, you know what I'm saying? Uh, saying that's going to harm legacy companies like Paramount more than Netflix, says Handel first. Uh, streaming giants like Netflix don't necessarily need to rely on American talent and can produce internationally. True. Second, with the production halt, the streamers costs go down, but because of the subscription model, revenues remain the same. Hmm. So this might change. Oh, that's crazy. This might change some other things in, in the streaming model. This, this might. Mm. Wow. So Netflix is still get get paid because of how they get money, right? The sub the subscriptions, but they can still put out content and have content because they don't have to use American talent. Hmm. They can do the international thing, and a lot of their hits do be international. A lot of their hits do be international. They say it's a lot of uh, bitterness and trust. You know what I'm saying for TV and filmmakers who've been on. Uh, uh, TV and film writers have been on strike since May 2nd, but adding another crucial union in their business joins the fight and it adds, uh, and it adds leverage. SAG is 15 times the size of the Writers Guild, and so that's going to bring a lot of heft and a lot of wind in the sales for the energy on the pickets, uh, on the picket lines. But that don't mean that the strike will end anytime soon, man. Um, it's a lot of bitterness. It's a lot of mistrust both in terms of the actors and the studios the writers everything just everything is in disarray when it comes to what's going on man um am amptp which is the studio they made a, a statement saying we're de deeply disappointed that sag afra has decided to walk away from negotiations this is the union's choice not ours in doing so it has dismissed our offer of historic pay and residual increases substantially higher caps on pension and health contributions audition protect protections shortened series options periods a groundbreaking ai proposal that protects actors digital likeness and more now this is what <laughs> the studios the studios are saying now nah, we ain't saying none of that shit because we we said that it's going to protect the digital likeness of with, with ai and it's groundbreaking you know and we we saying that we're going to pay y'all uh and we're going to give y'all caps on your pensions and higher higher health contributions audition protections we got y'all man why y'all walked away what y'all doing? You know, but come on, man. I if you believe that, if you believe they walked away just to walk away when when they, you know what I'm saying? Nah. So uh as the industry comes to a standstill, the crew members, uh, like cinematographers and set makeup artists, they cease working as well, which is bad because these are these people probably get paid the least out of anybody. Um, you know what I'm saying? So they say in May 2020, oh, I'm sorry, May 2022, there were more than 28,000 camera operators, more than 3,000 set designers, and more than 1,000 makeup artists working in film and television. That's according to the uh, Bureau of Labor S Statistics. Moreover, the ecosystem around film and TV will suffer. A dollar that an actor or writer does not get paid is a dollar that they don't spend at a restaurant. And that becomes a dollar that the waiter doesn't receive. So it's a ripple effect. This especially over that you know what i'm saying that economy over there i'm pretty sure is really based off of or a lot of those sub those those sub economies over there is based off of uh hollywood dollars and what i mean by that is like what they just just described the actor coming in spending money at the restaurant for the waiter who is probably an up-and-coming actor himself can get you know what i'm saying so it's 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 uh the circle the circle of life over there you know what i'm saying when it comes to hollywood man uh and I think this is going to last a good three, possibly six months. Uh, just to show, just to show Hollywood that they not playing, man. I, I think that they're going to make this last as long as possible just to show Hollywood that they not playing. That's, that's what I truly believe. That's what I truly believe, man. And 
I'm with him. I stand with him. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, now I have to figure out, I'm going to, us as YouTubers are going to have to figure out how are we going to be doing the content that we're doing going forward? Do we pivot over to international content? Because we're still content creators and we still have to do our job. But I want to see uh, them prosper. You know what I'm saying? It is movies that's going to be coming out within this time period. As a content creator, should we cover those movies? You know what I'm saying? If you're standing with SAG, do you cover those movies? Do we talk about some of these movies? Uh, it's, and it's a fine line with that because I'm pretty sure that the actors want these movies still to do good because they would still be getting paid from these movies. So I don't know, man. I don't really know how to, to broach that situation. But I hope everything ends up better suited for actors. Um, I don't want to say I don't care about studios, but they make their money. Studios make their money. They make Disney you good. Pay pay these, you know what I'm saying? Warner Brothers, Paramount, NBC, Universal. Come on, man. Pay these. Make make it right. Make it right so we can get. I, I, as a matter of fact, what's crazy is we haven't seen the writers and actors strike. I think since the '60s. I think it's been 60 years since they had a strike together. Where this happened, you know what I'm saying? Where the where they were playing ball together. So yeah. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. This it's gonna be a long it's we halfway through the summer, it's gonna be a long winter. If you're trying to watch TV, so be ready for sports, <laughs> game shows, and reality shows. That's all you're gonna have. Game shows, sports, and reality shows. Yep. That's it. That's all we're gonna have, man. That's all we're gonna have. 